we have made the observation that if a function is positive, we can think of the definite integral of the function as the area under the curve. What if the function is negative, or sometimes positive and sometimes negative? In this video, we will deal with that case. And we'll start with an example. Let's compute the definite integral from zero to pi of the cosine of theta d theta. Well, an antiderivative of the cosine is the sine. So we evaluate to that from zero to pi. And we get the sine of pi minus the sine of zero. Well, as it happens, both of those are zero. So this definite integral is zero. What does that mean geometrically? On an interval from zero to pi, the cosine of theta looks like this. And you see there is area under that curve. But now when you get below the x-axis, talking about the area under this doesn't make any sense. There's an infinite amount of area under this. What you could talk about instead is the area above the curve. And the way this works out is that area under the curve is counted as positive, but this area above the curve is counted as negative. So that's how we were able to get to zero here, the positive area and the negative area canceled each other out. One way this is frequently framed is that the integral from a to b of f of x dx is the weighted area under the curve. 